So let's continue. So this idea uh, of random search uh, and sort of attempt to, in a clever fashion, to move towards the minimum was also implemented in so-called simplex descent method. And the paper with it appeared uh, was written by Nelder and Mead in 1965. And this method appeared to be amazingly efficient, actually. So idea is this. Uh, first question, do you maybe sometimes buy milk in Tetra Pak? That's a company called Tetra Pak in this simplex things. Is it still for sale somewhere? Do you know what I mean? So it's a pyramid like this with the uh, base which is triangular and it has four, one, two, sorry, three facets like this. In total, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah? So they said let's form the simplex, it's called this figure, geometrical figure, it's called simplex. So let's form it in the space of independent variable. Whatever dimension is, doesn't matter, four points, one, two, three, four, would form this space, would form this figure. How to choose size of this? It depends on the ranges in which you search for the minimum, often user defined, or maybe you could say, okay, its size could be maybe in total one twentieth of the total volume of the space to search in. You could think of different things, but let's form this. And then what we do is this. We first run, so calculate the function value which you want to minimize at four points, okay, in, in space of n dimensions. Please remember these are vectors in space of n dimensions. It's not necessarily three-dimensional space we're searching for. So calculate function at four points. What do we do then? We remove the bad point. So it means the point where function value is high. For us, it's a bad point because we're minimizing. Is it music or disco? Alarm. We we'll wait, we we'll run, or we we'll continue? OK. We're safe? It's just nuclear explosion somewhere and nothing serious. OK. Good. So uh, imagine. Uh, so we calculated four points. Uh, this one is a bad point. We marked red here. Okay? This is a bad point. What do we do then? We will form the new simplex by using this, the following algorithm. Ah, sorry. It's, this is the worst point here. The worst point. This one. So we take the worst point, which is this one, and we reflect it through this plane, which is formed by the three other points. In total, there are four, right? So one is worst, three other points are okay. So we make a plane here. Equation of the plane is easy to do because uh, with, for three points, you always have a hyperplane going through the three points. And we reflect this point through that plane over here for the same distance. So we calculate distance of this point from that plane and then we continue for the same distance and we make the new point. Like this. So worst point we remove and we're left again with four points. And we form the new simplex like this. Using the this three blue points and red one. And black one is bad, we remove it. So what happened here? So we have the new simplex, you see here. Again four points. What is the average quality of this simplex? Is it better than previous or not? How do we know? We haven't calculated value here yet. It's a provocative question to check if you're attentive. So we try to assume that since this is bad point and these are average points, which are better than this one, if we jump through these average points, we will be moving away from bad points to good direction. So it's imitation of gradient search in a way, isn't it? Again, so this bad point, high value, these are not so high, and we hope that high, not so high, 
low, 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 and we make this step towards the uh, area in the space with the low function value. So, and then we evaluate this point, and if value here is better than the worst one, we keep it. Beco and then three points left, one is better than this one, so average quality of this simplex would be improved. So we made the step towards the minimum, or at least where we hope to have minimum value of the function. That's the basic operator in simplex descent method. Has nothing to do with the simplex method for linear programming again, but it's this thing. Any questions here? Or if it's worse, then we don't do it, so then we do something else. So we evaluate and repeat the process. If it's worse, then uh, we could uh, do this. Maybe it was that simplex, this is bad, even worse. Maybe we make half <coughs> step towards these good points and we hope to find better point here. That's also an option. Or we do some other things, like random search, but random is not in the original algorithm. Also, <coughs> maybe we make a longer step. Maybe this is too short, and maybe we hope to find uh, a better point if we go even further away from bad point. Maybe if this one is not good, we do this. We go further, and we find better point. So there are different versions uh, considered. These are ac actually copies from the book. I should have put a reference here of uh, 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 numerical Recipes uh, book, so highly recommended reading. It's very nice, short description of many algorithms, very clear with the codes given, so very nice. You can see how it's coded. It's not trivial coding, by the way, but it's not that complex. So that's simplex descent method, works well. Variation of it <coughs> is that we generate several simplex uh, like this in the space randomly, and we do multi-start. We throw the simplex and they would roll, the simplex would roll down, 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 all of them independently, okay? This would be multi-start, it's implemented in the Globe software that we will run in a second. It's implemented as uh, multiple simplex, M simplex it's called, this algorithm. Actually, uh, I, do, I didn't know about this when I implemented multi-start simplex, it was in 90, I think, but I did know about publication of Gupta and Sarushan and Duan. I think it was Duan who was uh, then PhD student in University of Arizona. So he proposed the uh, method which is now widely used in hydrology because they published the codes. They did smart thing. They gave codes for free. So many people started to use it. So it's a uh, Simplex Complex Evolution Method, it's called, S-C-E-A for Arizona University, U-A, University of Arizona, S-C-A. Uh, so you can search and you find paper of 1992, Shuffled Complex Evolution, University of Arizona. So that's uh, the method. Hmm? S-C-E method, widely used in hydrology because these guys are hydrologists. And of course, with uh, you know, very well known Gupta and Sarushan. At that Gupta, I think, was a very young researcher, but they worked in the same department at that moment. And perhaps it was Duan. Duan now back to China, professor in a normal university in, Pe uh, in Peking, in Beijing. So in shuffle complex evolution, they did this. They are running multiple simplexes moving across space, and the simplexes. Uh, exchange information with each other about quality of the function, if, about values of the function. And if some simplexes are in the wrong place, they don't continue with them. In this way, they improve efficiency. So that's main idea. But at that time, already evolutionary algorithms were popular, so that's why they put E here, I think, to call it evolutionary so that it would be better accepted. And you can say it's also evolution, isn't it? So these are Bad offspring, these are good offspring, why not call it evolution? Simplex evolution, sounds good. So anyway, so that's yet another method that can be used for cases when you don't have derivative 
uh, when your function is not analytical, not uh, cannot calculate derivatives. One more idea which hap I happened to implement when I started to look into this uh, direct search uh, methods is called adaptive cluster covering. So if you're interested in details, go to these two papers. You'll find descriptions and you can use GLOBE where this algorithm is implemented. So if I would have done this now, I wouldn't make it too complex uh, like it was. But uh, at that time, I was young and naive and thought more complex algorithm than it would be better. So it has many parameters to set, so it's a bit complex. But it, w it happened to beat, uh, in terms of efficiency, several other algorithms. So I was quite happy to see it. So the main idea is this. Consider you have a function like this, multi-extremum function. And of course, you don't have this plot. Otherwise, you would have chosen this point as the solution, right? You don't have this plot. So, but you can calculate this function at any point. So what we do is this. So it's main idea in one dimension. We first generate random set of points, which you can call population if you like genetic algorithms. Fine with me. So we generate a set of points. I have a laser beam, right? And then what you do, you select only points which are good. They're marked by black. Why they're good? Because here function value is low. So we say these points are good. In this way, as you can see, we have three groups of points, or three clusters. Okay? Three clusters of points. So we leave only black points for the further investigation. Why we don't like these points? Well, because they have high function value. But we don't know what happens with the function. Here you see here only three points here, which characterize function here. But what if there is an outlier and function goes like this? We'll miss it. It's a random search. We can miss it anyway. But the idea is that we expect function is to be reasonably smooth, so that several points here would describe well what's happening with this function. And then we form these three clusters and continue working with only these three clusters. So let's look now <coughs> at the same case in two dimensions. So you have three, two dimensions, x1, x2. And first we generate random, uh, randomly points using uniform distribution on both axes. Then we evaluate all these points. It could be 100 points. We evaluate them, function value. And then we leave only good points. So we hope that in these three regions, function values would be low. They are low already. We don't hope. They are low. But we hope that minimum, local minima, would be in one of these three regions. That's a hope. What we do next, we select the best points out of these three. Imagine this is the current best point. We arrange uh, the hypercube here, or sphere, whatever you want to call it. But in high dimensions, hypercube and sphere are almost the same, as you maybe know. In two dimensions, sphere and, and cube are different, but in multiple dimensions, it's almost the same figure in terms of volume. We arrange first this to cover all these points. We select the best point, and then we would generate more points around the best, hoping that there would be minimum somewhere here. And we iteratively continue doing this. So every time we arrange a smaller and smaller regions or hypercubes where we search for a minimum, and every time it would move together with the best point because best point is the center of this hypercube. In this way, we'll move population towards the uh, smaller values, like it's happening in all other random search methods. So then we stop at a certain moment when we stopped improving uh, function value, and we say this is local minimum for that cluster. And then we do the same for all clusters. So this algorithm called adaptive cluster covering, and strangely enough, well, I used several ideas which I found in the literature, but nobody combined these ideas into this algorithm. And it appeared to be quite a reasonable strategy 
which in terms of efficiency and accuracy also was beating canonical genetic algorithm which I implemented. It does mean it's the best, but it's never true for any algorithm. The, you always have a problem for which there would be algorithm which is the best. And every time it could be different algorithm. So don't trust the uh, statements that G GA is always the best. No, it's not true. Right. Any questions about this? So what I want to show you here about the random search or randomized search algorithms. First, they share the main idea that we randomly generate vectors in the decision variable space, points, vectors, same thing, and somehow remove bad points and add new points which we hope would be better. That's the main idea in every algorithm. In this way, we in a way imitate a move along the gradient because gradient also points to the areas of decision variables in the decision variable space where we hope function values would be lower. It's imitation. In a way, it's implicitly uh, implicit calculation of gradient direction. It's not done explicitly, but it's done implicitly. Any questions? So how to apply this? Look, GA, you can find a lot of software on the web. In MATLAB, uh, there is implementations and so on. Simplex method also implemented. SC is, you can download, it's Fortran code, uh, C code as well. You can uh, use it. Uh, our code, adaptive cluster covering, uh, we have also MATLAB implementation. Uh, and in the software, which I will show you now, also it's implemented. Uh, in Python, you have enough algorithms implemented of randomized search, and if you search for algorithms, you'll find many. But some of these codes are written by students uh, to, you know, in a couple of months, and they work for their problem, but it doesn't mean they would work for other problems. So be careful, because some of these methods may be not terribly bug-free, you know, and reliable. So you always have to uh, read the uh, feedback of users who use these codes. But it's not a big problem nowadays. 20 years ago, it was very different. Nowadays, you can have a lot of codes for free, and, uh, or if you pay more, you have more reliable codes. Right. What do we do now? I want to show you a bit how uh, this software works, and we will uh, choose uh, two problems to solve. So I would invite you to open your laptops now. When is the next break? At 11.15? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So I have sent you the file called global RAR. I hope by now you have unzipped it, unrarred it into a folder. And you should have a folder that looks like this. With the oh, I cannot read much on this screen. It's global executable that you have to s run, OK? Do you have it? So you should see this screen if you start it, right? Do you have it? OK, first thing we do, we will uh, try to find minimum of Hasaki function, which is two extremum function. This function. So this function is implemented, hard-coded into globe, uh, along with uh, other 15 standard functions. So this function will try to find uh, the minimum of. Again, the surface, <coughs> we don't know. What we know that there is a code that imp uh, that runs this um, calculates this function given two input variables x1 and x2, but imagine you don't know the this equation here you don't know it. Okay, so you don't know this equation, so so you cannot use gradient uh, based search. In principle, it could because it's analytical expression. But imagine this is a complex model that gives you some output. Okay, that's your assumption. 
So if you open existing project and do you see demos folder? So double click on it and there is a six hump, not six hump with DLL. It's also would run, but uh, use six hump. It's faster. Now, what do you see on the screen? If you go to set parameters, click on set parameters, I want to explain you a bit what you would see here. Do you have it open? Look, on the left, you see uh, 17 algorithms implemented here. First is called external program. It means that <coughs> you would specify here you see six sum exe name here of the external program which is called six hump it would generate so it works like this so globe uh, start this is uh, globe okay so when you start it would generate file called gpin pin stands for parameters input in two-dimensional problem, it will have two numbers, which are values of x1, x2. If you have eight-dimensional, like in our model, it would have eight numbers generated. Okay, So this file, when you specify six pin, uh, uh, so external program, should be structured in such a way that when you start it, it would read this file. You should, so this goes to disk. So you start this program. This file should be also generated by Globe. It's done. So this then file goes to program. And this program should generate file, which is called GRSP, G response. It should have one number only, which is the function value. So in fact, this is x1, xn. And GRSP would have F of X1, Xn. So this GRSP should have one number only. And then Globe would read this number and think what to do next. So and this iteration repeats, so I don't know, 1,000 times or 100 times, depending on how much time you have and how long this program run is. If it's simple program, one program run is a fraction of a second. If it's a complex model, then program run is could be 20 minutes if you run swim for a complex network. Okay, so if you generate, then uh, okay. Anyway, so that's enough said. So we'll now run this, but in Globe for research purpose, I implemented all these functions and hard coded them. So there is no need to run external program. This external program already is part of Globe. So all this process with external programs imitated just for speed purpose, because to write file, read file, it takes time. So this is what we'll do now. So instead of using external program, we'll use internal implementation of this uh, code. So if you go to this six hum camelback 2D function, you see this? If you click functions to optimize six hum camelback 2D functions, And then uh, when we close this and start run, it would start uh, trying to find minimum of that function. So please click cancel now. Say no. Ah, sorry, I opened already it. Yes, no, don't click cancel. You have to choose this, six hum implementation. Sorry, don't click cancel. So six hum camelback function. Now, what are the, this uh, block of screen shows to you? It shows uh, the ranges in which we will searching. So x1 will be between minus 2 and 2, and x2 between minus 1 and 1. You can change it if you want, but uh, no need. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit the screen well, I don't know. It's an, in this version of the window somehow. Oops. I did something wrong. So if you say OK. Yes, uh, sorry. Again, click on the parameters. Let's continue with the algorithm. So click on the tab, algorithms. 
In this screen, you can choose what algorithms to use. There are in total seven algorithms implemented. Actually nine, because two of them allow additional uh, option changing of options. But for the time being, we will use only genetic algorithm. So uncheck all other algorithms, just not to confuse the picture. And this is a canonical genetic algorithm implemented in St. Globe. Okay? What you can do, you can say run until optimum found here on the right hand side. Pause after each iteration or not. Or confirm every step by clicking continue. So leave it at no first. Don't change anything else because it's, uh, it's okay. Now, if you go to GA tab, you can set up genetic algorithm here, the one we chosen. For example, population side would be 50, maximum number of iterations 100, and so on and so on. And uh, if you know what genetic algorithm is, you would know what all this stuff means. Crossover, uh, probability, and so on. Mutation probability and such like. So don't change it for the time being. Let's leave it there. So click OK. And now run and pray that it would not hang up under Windows 10 because it was developed for Windows 98. And since then, some function call changed. And I tried to avoid to rewrite. To it's 20,000 lines of code or more, or maybe more even. So that's quite a complex thing. So let's start optimization. So what do you expect? If you look uh, at this function, we expect to find two local minima. Let's see if it happens. That's it. 27 generations run. Each of them has 50. Uh, so if you would. So, sorry, excuse me? Doesn't run? Excellent. It's a randomized search. <laughs> Uncertainty. You generate random values. We choose only one GA. I have 970 evaluations needed, and it stopped after 27 iterations. And maximum number of iterations was 100, so it stopped earlier. It found a good minimum, so there was no need to run 100 iterations. It started earlier, much earlier. So my result is 3.6 uh, by 10 to minus 2, so it's 0, 0, 3, 6, 2, 6. Anybody has better one? Better? How much better? Wow, that's excellent. So, but let me start again and see what happens. If I start again, will it be the same? Different result. Now I'm better, look. Why result is different here? So now I have 4.8, 10 to minus 3. So it's much, not much, but lower. So why is that? It's random search. Previously, I wasn't terribly successful. Now it's more successful. So. Conclusion is you have to run this algorithm several times because every time you generate random numbers. By the way, if you want, don't want this, there is an option to fix the seed. Do you know in MATLAB seed or in other software what is seed? So this is not random number. It's, it's pseudo-random number. So there is some random number generator that generates numbers, but you can instruct it to generate the same sequence of numbers if you start with the same first number. It would generate the same sequence. They're not random, hence. But they look like a random. Because if you plot them, you would have very much uniform distribution, slightly like this. You know. So you can instruct it to use the same sequence for all algorithms. And then comparison would be maybe more fair. Anyway, so that's the result we have. And look, that's a different point here. But there are two local minima, and they're very close. So it found one of them, and we're ha we should be happy. But uh, also in this software, you can see the 10 best points here. Uh, OK, it's in the report. You can see 10 best points, which could be different away. So I deliberately generate 10 best points, because it does mean this is the best solution. 
if you slightly move, if you have 10 base points, this second optimum, which is here, would be also in that uh, uh, set. Now, if you scroll through this history uh, screen, you will see how, uh, how optimization goes. You see, after first generation, 94 evaluations, best uh, global minimum was 1.3 to the 10 minus 1, then 1.05, then 6 to the minus 2. You see, it goes down and down. With every iteration, if you scroll through, you would see that after each population generated, we get better and better points. Because we generate random points, we recombine them, we kill the bad points, and every time it goes down, down, down. So in the end, we arrive where we want to be. So stopping criteria, if you go to set parameters, to GA, Look, I wrote it 20 years ago, so let me recall. So here it says configurable termination conditions over here. If you go to this uh, set parameters button, J tab, so it says there are several conditions. So it's, it's not trivial when to stop this random search algorithms. So what I do, I run it for one generation more, and if we cannot improve even for one or two generations, then we stop, not one generation, because it may happen that you get on the flat plane and then you may drop again. So you wait a bit. So that's what is done here. So uh, it says stop a fractional improvement of for n iteration is less than 0001. So it means for n iterations, and this n iterations is 15. So it means uh, that we would run still several times until we uh, will not be getting better result. If you don't have much time, reduce this to three and do store after three iterations. But here it's 15, so it runs quite considerable time because we hope still to find better ways. And the second one stops if fractional difference between best points averaged in successive edge generation is less than 0, 0, 001. Wow. So what we do here we take the whole generation, we uh, calculate average quality across 50 points, so average quality, and if there is no improvement better than this, then we stop. Okay, so these are f uh, stopping rules that we uh, apply. Okay, so that was GA. Now let's look at another algorithm. Algorithm. So please now switch off GA and switch on my favorite adaptive cluster covering. Say OK. And now we start optimization. That's it, done. It was fast, isn't it? So in total, it was 328 evaluations. So it's half of what we had. So it's faster. <coughs> and the result is 4.6 by 10 to power minus 3. So it's quite low. So it's not bad. But let me show you uh, iterations. So click here. Confirm every step by clicking continue. Over here you see this. For algorithms. And then we start optimization. So it says here you can watch the process of optimization of randomized search. So first we evaluate initial population of 50. Continue. So among these 50 points generated, these are random points. You cannot see it on black screen, but you see on, on your screen because points is one pixel wide. So this screen doesn't show them. So out of this five of, of uh, how many, uh, 50 points, we identified three clusters. You remember that algorithm when we find clusters of points, which are good, three clusters, and we took only 40 points out of 50 because 10 points we removed as bad ones. Now click continue again. So clusters are colored now. You see green, light blue, and dark blue. Do you see them on your screens? Difficult to see. Now we continue. 
we take the blue cluster first. We take all the blue points in that cluster, we find the best one, and we arrange a new hypercube around that best point. You see, it's this one. Click Continue. We throw more points into that hypercube, we evaluate them, and we find the best point again. It moved a bit, and this is the current best point. Ah, no, sorry, sorry. Blue uh, cluster finished. Now it's green one. In green one, we do the same. Continue. You see green moved. It means we found better point towards that side. Continue. It moved again. So we moved like this, and we find even better point. And I think we stop. No, we moved again. We moved again. Huh? Interesting. So it means algorithm finds better and better points because it's set up, I think, to do it uh, maximum eight times or something like this. So stopped. So this is best point found so far, and it is in the green cluster. Actually, it's one of the local minima. It's found already. But we don't know that it's found. We continue search. Continue with the light blue. Continue, continue, continue. But by the way, this point is not very good, but still it continues. What last iteration is white one. So white iteration is this. We take the best point and we throw more points trying to find even better. So it's uh, refining, refining, refining. If we have time, we do it. Continue. You see it's smaller, 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 stopped. That's it. We're finished. So this is adaptive cluster covering. And you see the logic of the width. If we say continue, ah, no, it continues. Local search. Done. So there were two local searches. OK, I will not go into details how local search is done. I use Powell brand method. If we have time, I could tell you about it. Very nice method, but OK. Anyway, so in the end, I needed 374 iterations, and I found this value. So that's what it does. OK? Now, for research purpose, you can set up several of these algorithms. So. When I was young and naive, I tried to beat GA. And at one of the conferences, uh, Goldberg, who was author of the book, he saw these results when I beating GA. He was a bit unhappy. And after the <laughs> talk, he, well, we talked nicely, all this nice. And then he said strange thing. He said, well, it's all recorded. No, OK, anyway. No, it was OK, so it was nice. But look, uh, to beat one algorithm on some example, it means nothing. You know, you have to be consistently beating another algorithm. And what is beating? OK, it will find the minimum anyway, whatever you take, random search, just a bit longer. The problem starts when your function evaluation lasts for a day, one function evaluation. Here, function evaluation, uh, uh, it takes you a fraction of a second. So it doesn't matter what you need. You wait 10 minutes or you wait 15 minutes. You just have another cup of Brazilian coffee. And even it's better even to wait a bit longer. You chat with friends, la la. So, but if one function evaluation is one day, so I remember at one of the conferences, uh, they were showing results of multi-objective optimization. And uh, they were showing how Pareto set was constructed and they needed 50,000 evaluations, and then they comparing half a percent better, half a percent worse. And then one guy stands up, Japanese, and says, look, I work for Honda Corporation. We're doing multi-objective optimization of the designs of cars and different industrial equipment. So for me, to evaluate one function takes a day, because it's supercomputing running for the new design, you know, to calculate performance factors you know, it's a complex thing. So you're showing me now 50,000 evaluations. What, should I wait for 50,000 days? I will be fired by then, you know. I will die by then. So, so give me methods that would allow me to come up with at least some optimization during limited time. And he's right. Maybe one day is a bit exaggeration. So, OK, then what? If you have three days, only three runs, maybe. But for water resources, one function evaluation may take minutes easily in water distribution. 
Or if you solve hydrodynamic problems, it may take hundreds of minutes for complex 2D models. So you have to then pose this problem. What if I have limited time of, say, one week of computer run? One week, okay. For PhD students, normal, one week. One function evaluation is, I don't know, one hour. So how many hours are in one week? 24 by 7? Calculator. Nobody can calculate. No. 168 function evaluations I can make. What algorithm should I choose that would give me a reasonably good answer after 168 evaluations? That's your problem. And not uh, what algorithm would be most efficient because it, sorry, would give you the most accurate solution because this most accurate solution may come in, in several years when you don't need it. That's the problem. So it's inverse problem. You limit your time, you know what is the function evaluations, you say, okay, I have one week to do it, reasonable. You run your desktop for one week, and then after 168 evaluations, you have some reason. So that's the, the interesting problem to pose. Which algorithm is the best? So he, this problem is not solved, but you can, uh, like in GA, look, in GA you have population size of 50, okay? Imagine one, uh, uh, so if you have 168, you have possibility to run only three iterations. Each of them is 50. That's it. You have to stop then. You can evaluate how long you would run. Also in ACO, if you, you, you look at these parameters, if you look at the paper, you understand what these parameters mean. You can tune these parameters such a way that you would have approximately 160 or 180 Evaluations and it would stop and it would give you a reasonable answer. Okay? Good. Any questions? I have a question. When do we have a break? Now. We are five minutes late. No? So, uh, break is 10 minutes. We convene at 11.30 and then we'll calibrate our model. And we'll know the winner. Winner would be Globe. This will be the winner. But uh, human winners also. Did you calibrate? Okay, after the break. Coffee. Or whatever we drink. <laughs>